Okay, well, hello and welcome to our barbecue cooking class. Um, we decided that we wanted to showcase our barbecue cookbook because, in case you didn't know, when you buy a TM6 this month, um, you have the option of upgrading with a, an extra bundle that includes our beautiful barbecue cookbook um, and the meter and the barbecue skewers. So we've got our barbecue cookbook there. It's been out, it got printed about a year ago um, and it's got some amazing recipes in it. So we thought, right, well, that's as good an excuse as any to, uh, to have a class. But really, we're just really getting into the spirit of, you know, it's spring, the days are getting longer, we're all getting closer, hopefully, to a bit more freedom and being able to catch up with family and friends. And barbecues are the best way to do that. So um, tonight we're going to showcase a couple of meat dishes. And we're also going to show you a couple of salads and a couple of appetizers and generally have a bit of fun. So if you've got any questions, pop them in the chat. Tammy is our chat guru tonight. Um, so she'll be able to help with any questions. Um, and for those of you who haven't met me before, uh, my name's Teresa, obviously, it's on the screen. Um, and I'm the business development manager for the Thermomix branch called Vivid. And we cover um, oh, quite a big chunk of Sydney, the, the northern suburbs um, up to sort of Barara. And then we cover down through the city all the way down to Botany Bay and, you know, pretty much everything in between. Um, so we are very, very happy to have all of you here. Um, I always like to apologise. This is real life. I do live in a house with teenagers and dogs and my dogs every now and then do like to interrupt. So I apologise in advance for any barking. Um, I'll do my best to make sure that uh, they don't set your dogs off. But without any further ado, um, our first presenter is the lovely Stephen Hill, who has is going to show you... I'm going to spotlight Stephen and then take myself off. And Stephen is going to be showing you how to do a fragrant whole barbecue fish. So over to you, Stephen. Thanks, Teresa. How, uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. So I'm going to do a very, very simple dish, but it's amazingly fragrant and super easy, uh, super, super tasty. So I have got a um, small snapper um, that was delivered yesterday by, um, by Courier. And it's just a small one, so it's just enough for two people tonight. And I'm just going to run through the marinade with you quickly. So I've just chopped up some chilies, some ginger, uh, a couple of stalks of lemongrass, uh, three or four garlic cloves. I've gone a little bit extra on the garlic. I do like my garlic. And those are all going to go in one go, along with um, the, the base of the... Um, coriander and we're going to use the leaves later on and some spring onions uh, chopped up into thirds and some I've actually only been able to find some dry cafe limes unfortunately um, but they'll, they should work fine and we've simply just blitz these for a few seconds and it's just for five seconds on speed eight I'll just bring this up to the camera so you can see what's going on. So we've got a lovely already, this is smelling amazing, such a lovely um, fragrant um, dry rub, but we're gonna add a little bit of oil. Um, the recipe calls for peanut oil, but unfortunately I didn't have any. So I'm just using a little bit of grapeseed oil tonight, which should be fine. Uh, about 60 grams goes in the bowl. A little more splash. And that's just gonna mix in with the marinade now. For another few more seconds. And this is where it all gets a bit fun. So we're gonna empty the um, beautiful marinade out of the bowl. I'm just gonna put this on the plate now. And we're gonna rub the whole fish, both sides in the marinade. And then this would normally go in the, uh, the fridge for about three hours, um, wrap it in cling film or put a cover over it. So the flavors intensify in the fridge um, for about three or four hours. I'm actually, Unfortunately, I've only got one fish. So what I'm actually going to do tonight is um, I'm maximizing it by having a little bit extra of the 
marinade because my fish is quite small. So I'm just gonna just coat the fish on both sides. And what I've also done with the fish, I've sliced it, um, oh sorry, scored it on both sides, three or four places on the skin. I'm just gonna let that soak in for a few minutes. And one of the things, I'm just gonna wash my hands, guys. One of the things that's um, as part of the, uh, if you decide to purchase them this month, is the barbecue cookbook, which we've got here, and also the, the meter plus. And I'm actually gonna use this tonight to actually cook the fish. Um, because the, the actual recipe calls for a full size fish, um, you know, a, a four or five person one, which is about two kilos. This is actually about six, uh, 600 grams. So it's gonna probably take a little, a lot less time to cook. So, and I don't know how long it's gonna take, but I'm gonna use the uh, meter and work this out with the app. So I don't know if anybody's um, seen the meter or used the meter before, but basically there's two probes. Um, the first part of the meter goes into the, the, the item that you're cooking. And in this particular case, it's the fish. And the lower part of the back end of the meter stays out and it measures the ambient temperature of the actual um, oven or barbecue. And in this case, it's the barbecue. So I'm gonna find the thickest part of the fish, which is just, a, just by the head, just below the head. And I'm gonna push this in as far as it goes. And there's a little mark about two thirds of the way down, which is where you leave, um, you stop the probe going in. And I'm hoping guys, um, if somebody can tell me that you can hopefully now see my iPad coming up on screen. You can. I'm just going to find the app. There it is. So this is the app that comes with the Meter Plus. So you basically get a, a, a little little um, device that you say, right, I'm going to set up the time, uh, the type of cooking. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to pick what type of item I'm cooking. In this case, it's a fish. Um, then you pick the type of fish. Now, in this particular case, this is a snapper. It, there isn't a snapper on the list. So you could pick something close to it. So I actually thought maybe, I thought maybe trout would be close or I could go other. And I've actually had a look at this this afternoon and, 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 and played around with it and actually picking trout or other actually doesn't affect the way it's gonna cook. So I'm actually gonna just use the other. Uh, uh, then ask what type of cut. Now I don't have a fillet, so again, it's other. And then it sets the temperature. So it wants to get the inside of the fish to 65 degrees C which is cool. And then I just basically hit the start cooking at the top. Now this app works with mobile phones um, or iPads. And it basically is telling me where to put it. So I said top of the head it, and it goes in uh, about two thirds of the way down and there's a little rim, little mark on the actual meter itself. And I basically say, uh, start cooking. And I'm pretty much ready for my supper. I'm gonna go and send this onto the barbecue now. And I'm, uh, I'm done for the evening. My, di my dish is ready. How simple is that? I love that. I've used the meter quite a bit, but I've never used it for fish. And I didn't realize that it actually gives you that whole picture and that advice about where to put it. So it's I'm brilliant, very, isn't it? I'm very glad I'm watching this tonight and learning at the same time. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that is very cool. So um, actually, all right, well, uh, I was going to say, Teresa, just quickly about that, that whole icon and the picture, it actually shows you that whatever type of um, item you're cooking. So if it's a joint of meat, it'll show you a piece of steak or a piece of yeah. beef or a bit of lamb or chicken. And it gives you the advice of where actually to put that, put the meter probe into. There you go. I've always used it on my phone, not my iPad. So I wonder if that might be a difference. Hmm. It could well be. It could well be. Anyway, thank you. I've learned something. So when, when Stephen has uh, finished cooking his fish, he's going to come back and show us the finished product. Um, and uh, I have already checked. He doesn't do Korea delivery so we all just have to imagine the beautiful flavors and and all the rest of it so okay we are now jumping over to I just have to find the right screen this is where my um to me Ellen yes that's where I need I needed Ellen okay so the lovely Ellen is making two dishes tonight so over to you Ellen Thank you very much, Teresa. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us on this lockdown evening as we await being released, us Sydney ciders. So tonight I'm going to be making a great hosting or just a dinner for two, or not dinner, snack for two, the camembert with cranberries and almonds. This is a really lovely one. Um, I haven't actually made it, but I've made a different variation of it. So let's get started. I'm starting cooking and it's asking for brown onion, Easy, pop that in, grab my lid, that would have been helpful to grab that. It was left in the drying rack from dinner. Okay, 
and it's going to turn to speed five. It's going to be three seconds. I just love chopping onion in this. Onion and garlic, boom, done. No muss, no fuss, no crying, easy. That's done. Chunky, nice and easy. I'm going to show you, I've shown you, I'm going to scrape down the sides. Perfect. Then we're going to add our dried cranberries, our salted butter, and some brown sugar. Those are all going in. Perfect. Next, we have our balsamic vinegar, which who doesn't love it? Oh, and there's also port as well. So I've already combined these ingredients to put them in. Okay, and port, give it that nice flavor on as required. And that's gonna be on reverse speed one, just for five minutes. While I've got that happening, I'm gonna spin you around. I hope that's okay, that's set up, excuse me, I think. And we are going to get started on the, I'm also gonna be doing the zesty avocado and lime dip. So really quick and easy while that's cooking. Just going to type it in because I didn't pre organize it over this. Oh, that's the wrong one. Not the zesty avocado with crab, we want the zesty avocado dip, which is not coming up. That's because it's zingy avocado. Oh, sorry. That's all right. I would have typed in zesty as well, but zingy, another Z word. <sighs> Should have thought KFC. Hello. <laughs> um, there it is. Thank you, Teresa. You're very well. The avocado and the lime dip. And this is such an easy one to throw together. Okay, so we've got our parmesan cheese, which I've left over here. Pop that in, I've just cubed it. That's in. Obviously that's just gonna break for a few moments. It'll be 10 seconds on speed 10. Next we have the jalapenos. Now the great thing about this is you can change this recipe to be as zingy, zesty, or as delightful as you like. Um, I'm not a huge chili person, so I'm actually gonna just do a little bit of chili. And I've also got in here my fresh coriander, two spring onions, and a garlic clove. So I'm gonna pop that all in. And then we'll pop the lid back on. Round to speed set. Okay. Scrape down the sides. Got a bit of balsamic on my other spatula. So you'll see, I'll show you now. That's all really nicely done. Really lovely. I mean, it looks very similar to the pesto that I make quite regularly. Scrape down the sides of that though. And um, you'll notice I do have my two thermomixes running tonight, which is so handy for when you're making things like this, or even if you're making lasagna, to have the two. And I was fortunate enough as a um, consultant to actually earn a second thermomix after already earning my first one. So it's a really great way to join the team, do some of these great cooking classes, just have fun and earn a free thermomix. Who doesn't want that? So now I'm adding our cross lettuce leaves. Okay. The lime and our mayonnaise I've put in here. So it is the zest of the lime, which you can see why I got confused now, zest, zesty. And also the juice of the lime, but not the actual pulp of the lime. And the avocado, flesh only. Don't want any of that skin going in there. I absolutely love these silicone spatulas from the mix shop. They're actually my favourite. You just have to be mindful, obviously, not to mix your fruity dream with them because they, they will go in further than desired and they will spoil for us. So pop that in. Nice and bright. And then I've got the mayonnaise in there already. Oh, 
my salt. I haven't done that yet, so I'm going to put a little bit of that in so patient till the arms release okay it's amazing i might actually even do that a little bit longer just so it's really smooth and um just push it all back down towards the blades and get that really nice and smooth but that looks absolutely amazing i would probably serve this with the um the sheeted crackers that I often seeded sheet crackers, which are amazing. Um, but tonight I was just going to have it with some celery. So I'm going to put that around for another 20 seconds. And then in the meantime, our calendar is coming along. So you can see our cranberry has started to cook and it's getting nice and well done. I'm going to now add in our almond. And put that lid on again. And that's just going to do one minute. Move you back over here, sorry. Back and forth, back and forth. So You're doing a fantastic job of just, you know, moving between the two. It's lovely. <laughs> it worked out well having the um, the tripod. I'm really glad I earned yeah. that one as well as a consultant. Ah, oh, um, there you go. Okay. And we have our zesty zingy. No, zesty? What was it? Zingy. Zingy, zingy. line. The colour is amazing. The colour is unbelievable and it looks that good in person. So let me grab you over here. Pop you over here. Move my mess. I'm just going to pop it in one of these green bowls for a moment so I can show you how amazing it is. And see how well that's come together. And a little bit more green. Perfect. Hmm. It is so flavoursome and it is definitely zesty. Is it zesty or zingy? I've forgotten again. It's zingy. It's both. We're going to give it, it both. It is both. It is delicious. Really strong lime flavour. And everyone's so controversial about coriander. I love it. That's amazing. And really great with celery sticks too. Um, caps, carrot sticks, capsicum, anything. So serve and that at your... Avocados are quite um, reasonably priced at the moment too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're not five dollars, so they're definitely yeah. worth your while. <laughs> okay, so I'll just pop you back up. Seems to have fallen a little bit. There we go. Okay, this is now telling me to serve transfer into my small thermo serving bowl, which I just have to grab. I'm in the cupboard. Sorry, I forgot to get that one out earlier. Okay. And I love these mini thermo serving bowls. They're no longer available as a host reward. However, last I checked, they were still available to buy in the mix shop. So do yourself a favour and jump on there and grab them because they're so handy. Even, I know, Teresa, you use them as well quite a bit. I use mine for um, if I've steamed some broccoli. Yeah. I'm just waiting for the chicken to cook or whatever it is if something's in the oven. It's a really great portion. And you actually fit more than you realise in these, I think they're 500 mil, um, and you fit a lot more than you realise. And this smells really good. I love a nice balsamic glaze. So without cleaning the mixing bowl, 500 grams of water. I'm going to pop that in. Okay, we're all wondering, what am I going to do now? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the aroma on I'm actually going to steam the camembert. So I've placed the foil and the baking paper into my Varoma and I've just put a few holes in them as instructed to pop that on the top. And then, which is it's telling me what to do. Then I'm going to secure the lid once I put in my 
camembert. So I'm going to pop my camembert on top, let that steam away for how long? 14 minutes, and then I'm going to come back and show you how amazing this cranberry and almond camembert is. Thank you very much. I have to say that the cranberry and almond camembert is one of my favourite dishes to have at a barbecue. Um, and as although you're going to steam the camembert, you can also do it in the oven. And Clelia, who's on tonight, says she does it on the barbecue. I was so, going to say that. Thank you so much, Teresa. I forgot about that. Yes, you can definitely do it in the barbecue or the oven. Um, it's such a versatile thing. So if you did want to do it, you know, use your Thermomix to do something else, pop it in the oven or the barbecue. Yeah, perfect. All right. Well, thank you very much. We'll look forward to seeing the finished result. Now, you don't need it all. Yeah, well, if you don't need it all. <laughs> so now we are popping over to Kathy, who is making our wasabi potato salad. Um, it's a, sorry, a warm wasabi potato salad, which I have to say, again, all these beautiful, fresh, zingy sort of flavours. Um, through the screen, I am imagining and getting very hungry. So over to you, Kathy. Thanks, Teresa. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to my home. Um, as Teresa said, I'm showing you this um, warm potato salad with wasabi. So, um, and it's from the Meals in a Flash collection. So I've done a couple of things ahead here, which I've done the potatoes. So I put those in the varoma and it's a good thing um, you, to space them all out. I'll just um, show you here. And oh, I don't know if I can, but yeah, you can probably see there. I've yep, that's great. Them all out. Yeah, but I've actually cut this recipe down by, by half because there's only two of us in this house. So, um, you can cut the recipe down. So that's a good thing. So what I'm gonna do now is tip these out into a bowl ready for later. So let's do that. Um, get that one out of the way. I just split them up just so that I could um, spread them around and get more um, steam through so they cooked. Uh, it only took uh, 18 minutes to cook those so and they didn't need a second go. So nice and easy there. And I've just turned my Thermomix back on and I've emptied the water out. So um, basically, let's go back to where we were because I was finished and it doesn't want to talk to me right now. So I'll leave it um, and let it think for a moment. Um, and then it's telling me to, whilst the potatoes are steaming, it tells me to slice up some um, shallots so I've done those nice and um, fine and then it also says uh, a radish there's four radishes in here so cut those nice and thin now some people um, will struggle with um, cutting them nice and fine so there's a little tip I'll give you you just use your peeler we've all got one of those in our drawer so cut the the tip off and then just start and then just peel it through and as you get to the end, don't rip it off like you would when you're peeling a, a veggie. Just turn it around and it comes off. So there you go. Nice and thin. You'll look like a professional chef when you put that on, on, the, the, um, on the table for everyone. So do those. And the other thing I have done with the radishes, I've cut them into little tiny, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to use those there to garnish on top with some of the nori sheets. So they're like little going, matchsticks almost. Pardon? They're like little matchsticks almost. They are. Very fun. Yeah. yeah, so they're good. So I'm going to throw the radish and the, um, the uh, shallots in there now. It also has a cucumber. It asks for continental cucumber. They're quite large. So I just bought a small Lebanese one and basically gave it a wash, took the seeds out and then cut it into half a centimetre. So they're nice and fine. Um, and just chop those up. So in they go. Now, here we are, let's see, uh, into a large, I think I'm right there now. No, I'm not quite there, let's go back. So I'm basically going to be making the dressing and I just wanna tell you what those ingredients are because I've put them all ahead here aside. Okay, so we're ready. We've got here, um, some mayonnaise, which I've made ahead in the Thermomix, only takes a minute and a half. So um, nice and easy. So in that goes. That lasts in your fridge for probably uh, a good two weeks. Um, and it's great around the summertime. So it's good to have that handy for sandwiches and everything that you do. And then we've got 40 grams of rice wine vinegar. Just remember, I've cut this down in half. 
but I'm just telling you what the recipe is. Then it's um, sesame seed oil, which is only a teaspoon. Then we've got some wasabi. Now it asks for 20 to 30 um, grams, but that's quite a lot. So it depends on how hot you want this. So I put in about um, probably 15, and I think that's probably plenty for us. Then we go on and we need some lemon juice. So 40 grams of that and some salt. And I put that into the mix before. So that's all there ready to go. So now asking for the lid and our measure cup. And it's five seconds for five, I'll speak five. Okay. Nice and easy. So now it's just asking me to transfer that into our uh, salad. So that's all there, all mixed. So we're going to pour that over. And there is uh, also some uh, coriander to add to this. As Ellen said before, a lot of people don't like coriander. We love it. Um, but you can replace it with things like uh, mint or even if you wanted um you could use some dill so pop that there and throw that in and we're ready to just give that a mix mix it through and it's just lovely you can smell the wasabi it's really beautiful and um mix that up there i'll just give it another few turns it's quite liquidy the um the dressing but it is it is lovely so all you're going to do now is pop it into a bowl not sure if you can see that, but I'll transfer it over and then I'll lift it up. Okay, great. And then I'll lift it up and show you our finished product. It's so easy. Um, and I've used new potatoes. I haven't even peeled any potatoes this afternoon. I've just used the new potatoes. They're about two centimetres, um, like a, a chunk. Um, and really easy. I've given them a scrub and a wash and give them a dry, cut them into, they're about four, or some of them are bigger, into about six. And then the cucumber through it looks really nice, lovely and refreshing. I've got a couple of chunks there, but that's okay. So what I'm gonna do now is pop on some nori sheets, um, just sprinkle that on the top. And the, I'll do a little bit of the, the little straws, what a julienne, I suppose you'd like to call it. And just another little tip I'll give you for when you're doing the nori, it's very hard to cut it on a, on a board. So grab your scissors, cut it, cut them into, you've got a sheet that's four times that, cut it down into lengths and then just grab your scissors and you can do it as wide as you like, but it's really nice and easy. Can you see what I've done there? It's very easy. So just continue with that. And there we are. There's our lovely salad. Oh, Kathy. That looks fantastic. And I tell you, I think you've just changed my life with the scissors with the nori because I've always struggled cutting them on chopping. Nori. No, it goes everywhere. It goes I everywhere. know. It does. But that looks fantastic. And the other thing, and of course, the basic premise of this is the steaming the potatoes and then adding a dressing. And if you look on Cookie Doo, we've actually got quite a few other variations. So if you don't like wasabi, that's okay. We've got lots of different ways that you can make up those quick dressings and then turn potatoes into something really special, don't we? And you know, potatoes are, are a great source of fibre, great to um, actually keep an eye on our cholesterol and our, our sugar levels. So I think a lot of us put potatoes aside thinking they're not that wonderful for us, but they're actually quite a really good source of fibre. So, yeah. Especially if you leave the skin on. I do like it when you can leave the skin Me on. Me too. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Thank love you. it. Thank no you. Enjoy. I'm, uh, again, you know, we need, we need to set up that whole career business because that looks fantastic all right well thank you now we're actually going to skip over to uh mel and mel is cooking five spice chicken in her brand new barbecue um brand now mel, new barbecue <laughs> brand new barbecue would you like me to play your video first or would you that would like be perfect talk? thank you yes yep okay so mel because the chicken's been cooking for a while mel actually videoed the process of getting it all ready and uh she was aided by the very lovely tam who's on our chat to um uh Make it look good. Edit. Edit's the word I was 
<laughs> okay, here we go. Can you all see that? Good evening, everyone. My name is Mel. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, I'm a consultant with Team Kawingai and Beyond. So tonight I'm doing the five spice chicken with the asparagus and pea salad. And we're going to be cooking um, the barbecue, the chicken in the barbecue tonight. So we're going to be heroing the meter plus. So you're going to get to see that in action, which is really exciting. So we're going to show you how to link it to your phone and even how to link it to Alexa if you have one. So it can actually keep an eye on your cooking for you too. But to get started, we're going to do uh, the rub that goes on the chicken. And we're going to show you how to um, apply that to the chicken. Okay, so following our cookie dough recipe, so we've got two um, teaspoons of granulated coffee. Now, here's a trick. I actually ground my coffee beans in the Thermomix, and so I'm using fresh coffee. The aroma is amazing. So two teaspoons have gone in. We've then got two tablespoons of brown sugar, two teaspoons of allspice, Um, we've got two teaspoons of dried oregano also going in and then we've got two teaspoons of ground paprika and a quarter of a teaspoon if you can see the color difference a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper to be fair it's probably about an eighth I'm a bit of a sook when it comes to anything too spicy we've also got um, half a teaspoon of ground back pepper again ground in the Thermomix and a teaspoon of salt flakes so this is actually um, pink Himalayan salt that I buy in bulk grind in the Thermomix and then it just sits in a jar like so ready to use so a teaspoon of that is going in as well okay so we're going to mix that around so we've also got the barbecue on at the moment so it's preheating to 200 degrees and we're going to program the meter plus um, when we stick it in the chicken ready to go okay so there's our rub ready to go so it says then to um, place our chicken in an aluminium roasting tray and rub the entire surface leave for a minimum of 30 minutes to flavor the chicken okay so this chicken has been trussed there's lots of reasons why we truss a chicken but the most important one is to keep it compact and together um, so that it doesn't um, overcook or doesn't dry out because all of the um, openings have opened up. So we've gone down underneath the wings. We've got them poking out so they're nice and crispy. And then we brought the legs together and bound it to um, the carcass so that we keep it nice, um, nice and even. Okay, so it's going to add a tablespoon of oil into our spice mix. Okay, so I decided to use technology and show you from the beginning how to set up your meter. So basically you take your meter out of the box and that sets it, gets it ready for Wi-Fi. So the lights are actually flashing and it's picked it up already. Okay, so let's go. So it actually warns you about what to do with it as well. It comes with a sticker that says always insert into the meter past this line. There's actually a little line in the on the meter to make sure that it's nice and safe and we can enable bluetooth wi-fi now the reason you want to enable wi-fi is it means that you can move further away from um, where you're cooking as well have a wine on the deck while the while the oven's going notifications so you know it's happening enable alerts and the, the probe is charged so we're good to go probes charged Yep, we're all good to go. Looking for the Meter Plus right now, and it's found it. So connected to Meter Plus, which is awesome. So we've got um, a 10 meter range, but when you use your Bluetooth and your Wi-Fi, you can actually extend it, which is awesome. And you can set it up for um, for Alexa. So you can get make sure that Alexa is watching as well. Okay. So we're going to save our password. Um, Amazon Alexa is already there. We don't have to worry about that. Infinite range we have set up. So infinite range is actually using it via the cloud, which is what we've got set up. 
that's all done. So that's handy. And we're going to get cooking. So how do we cook? What do we do? Okay, so to set up our meter, we choose to set up. Okay, so we need to set up a cook. So set up, tap to set up a cook. What are you cooking? We're cooking chicken. And it's a whole chicken. So it needs to be 74 degrees um, inside to be medium. So that's what the, the meter recommends between 73 and 75. So 74 is perfect. Okay, so it tells us to put the probe into the thickest part of the chicken up to this safety line. So the thickest part of the chicken is actually here. So we're going to put it all the way in up to the safety line. We're now going to pop it in the oven and it's going to tell us when it's ready to go. So when I see you next, chicken will be done and we'll be showing you the end result. All right, over here's here. one I prepared earlier. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just going to share my screen for a moment as well because I want to show you what um, the meter has done as well. So it gives you a warning five minutes before the cook has finished. Um, so we've done that. And then when it, the rest, then it says now it's got, oh, you'll see it next. So now it's seven minutes remaining and it's resting. So if you have a look, the ambient temperature is coming down. Obviously my kitchen's on 104 degrees, but if you watch the internal and the target temperatures, they're getting close together because the chicken can, can remains cooking um, while it's in its resting phase. So that's what happens with um, the meter. You're going to say the same thing with Stevens. It's an awesome addition um, to your kitchen. And obviously, if you're purchasing a Thermomix this month, um, you can buy in and get your meter barbecue cookbook and the fabulous skewers. But um, having it set up with Alexa, I was downstairs while it was cooking and Alexa was letting me know what was happening. So the smart technology, not just with your phone, laptop, but also obviously um, having Alexa keep an eye on it. So next time I see you, I'll be showing you the chicken with the salad um, that is paired with it. But it smells amazing. I've already had dinner, but my mouth is watering. So very quick and easy. And I think the cool thing about the meter is it's foolproof. Um, you're not going to waste any ingredients um, because it's telling you what to do. So you choose your protein, you cook it along. It tells you what's happening in your barbecue or your oven. Um, and keeps the temperature where it needs to be and lets you know if it drops away. So it's just another way to be smart in the kitchen alongside your TM6. Why is the ambient? So the ambient temperature is the temperature outside the piece, the protein that you're cooking. So it let me know that the barbecue, whilst it was cooking, was at 180 degrees. So if you look at the recipe um, for the chicken, it tells you to cook it for the first 15 minutes at 200 degrees, then drop it down to 180. So that's telling you that the oven or the barbecue or whatever you're cooking your um, chicken or other protein in is at the right temperature to reach the right result um, once you're done. So it's why the ambient temperature is important. And, and that is me done. Thank you, Mel. We will look forward to seeing the finished product. Um, but right now we also have Stephen ready to show us his finished product. So, oh, my goodness me. Look at that. Hey, guys. So um, I'm pretty impressed with this. As I said, I've got a, it's a fish for maybe, well, I reckon it's enough just me, actually. I think I'll just manage to eat all this myself. Um, so I was very fortunate, as I said, to have the meter. I wasn't sure exactly how long it was going to take tonight, but I've just taken a couple of screenshots. So this is now, it's saying it's ready to go. And then you actually get a, a, a little bit of resting time, which was two to three minutes for this fish. And that literally came off the, uh, the barbecue a couple of seconds ago. And I'm serving it with um, what were parboiled um, new potatoes. Um, Kathy mentioned that a little bit earlier. And then I put them on the barbecue just to char them off. And I've just done a quick uh, cold slaw with homemade mayonnaise, which I'd made in the firm mix a couple of days ago. So um, I'm ready. My dinner's done. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready to go. Oh. That looks amazing. Now, we've just had a question. When you put it on the barbecue, did you put it straight on the grill or did you put it on in a tray? No. So I, I've got a little um, sort of a wire rack, Teresa, and um, just oh, raised yes. it up slightly um, because yep. my barbecue does get extremely hot. Um, and I, it's good to control, but I just like to raise things just yeah. off the, um, 
off the base a little bit. One thing um, was very interesting to watch with the meter tonight, though, was because the meter's on one side of the fish, and the recipe calls for the fish to be turned regularly. When you were turning mm. it to the side that the meter was sort of on the fish, the cooking time completely dropped. So it was all of a sudden, it was like nine minutes, and then, then it was down to two. But then when you swapped it back again, it went back to seven or eight. So it's obviously got a little bit to do with, um, you know, the probe being closer to the, the naked flame of a barbecue. So it's one thing to yeah. watch. Um, it's yep. not so erratic when you're not moving a joint of meat. But obviously, as I said, this is a small piece of fish. Um, yeah. So it's a little, you need to just be a little bit more careful when you're when you're watching the meter. But, you know, it, it flashed off on my um, iPad, leaped at me and said, I've got, you know, four or five minutes to go, which was great. I love that. And for you and as Mel showed, the thing that I love about the meter is I really didn't understand how important it was to rest your protein when you were finished cooking it, that it yeah. actually was still yeah. cooking inside and you've got to wait. It'll actually reach that right temperature if you just let it sit for a bit. Um, yeah. So interesting to see with your fish. It was only a couple of minutes, but it's still important. So yeah. that's awesome. Thank you. Enjoy your dinner. Again, very envious. Uh, I had uh, defrosted <laughs> bolognese, so I'm now feeling very, very ripped off and thinking I need to uh, get my hands on some fish. Um, but uh, I really appreciate uh, all you've shown us there. So now we are going to pop over to the lovely Felicity because Felicity is showing us a different salad. Here you go, Fleet. Hello everybody, I'm sitting here a little bit disappointed because I have made a delicious salad, um, but I was smart enough while I was waiting here to whip up some burgers so the family won't tear me apart when they see that they're not having chicken or fish, they're having salad and burger patties. So what I'm making tonight is the apple and cranberry farro salad. I don't know whether you're like me and whether you've used farro before. We use a lot of quinoa and buckwheat and rice, but haven't used farro. So I did venture out. Now what I'm gonna start with is, we're gonna add 60 grams of dried cranberries. And I've also got white wine, which I had to have a glass as well, and water to add to this. Okay, so it is going to um, inserting measuring cup and we're going to now cook this for three minutes. It's going to cook on reverse so that it doesn't tear apart our lovely cranberries. Okay, so that's heating there. I think I just chopped it by mistake there, but never fail. So reverse speed one that that's going to cook away at. So what I did was I ducked over in my lunch break and I went to Harris Farm and also um, to Scoop and was able to find farro. So it was available in both of them. This recipe needs 250 grams of farro. And this cost me, I got 300 grams and it was under $5. What I did before you jumped on with me was I had I weighed a litre of water into my Thermomix bowl and I had some 30 grams of vegetable stock paste in there as well. Weighed in, well, I went 250 grams of farro into here and it cooked for about 24 minutes inside the simmering basket. Okay, so the simmering basket just sits in there, sits above the blades and it cooked perfectly. So farro is quite crunchy. So I guess um, a lot like um, a crunchy rice and that. So I'll be really interested to see how it tastes. It also had some thyme, fresh thyme. I didn't have any thyme. We're just getting our garden going now. But the business next door to me, he's a chef. So I ducked in and he had some in his garden, a bit of thyme. I didn't need much at all. So the thyme actually sat with the farro inside the simmering basket. So I don't know, you probably can't see it, but there's little bits of green all through this. Now, one of my running friends this morning who's on here, Gina, asked me whether farro is, um, is 
able to be eaten by her, whether it has gluten in it, and it's fine, it's gluten free. So that makes a really lovely alternative to quinoa. So get out there and try it, girls and boys. We've got 30 seconds left here. What we're doing is we're just stewing the cranberries in that wine and water. And then after that, we are going to add that into our onion. Okay, that was the other thing I did before. And like Ellen, I used one of my little thermo servers for my Spanish onion. That was just chopped for two seconds, speed six. No tears in the eyes here. Sitting there, once the cranberries and wine are finished, I'm going to add them into the little thermo server. So let me see. Let's have a look at this. Smells delicious. Yeah, let me see. We have, um, okay, so transferring it in with the onion. And then we're just going to stir it a bit and set it aside. Love cranberries. I use them in my muesli in the morning. So it's a staple that I always have on hand, full of antioxidants and lots of good stuff. Okay, and they will get added to our salad afterwards. So I'll just pop them here and now we're going to, oh no, we skip this part because this is the vegetable, 20 grams of vegetable stock paste, 1,000 grams of water, inserting the simmering basket, which I talked about, 250 grams of farro, unroasted, two sprigs of fresh thyme, and 20 minutes removing the basket. It's actually got a little video there showing you how to do it if you haven't done it before. It's asking me to rinse the bowl, but, I happen to have one I prepared earlier. So I also am lucky enough to have two thermomixes. So highly recommend becoming a consultant, earning one. I'm going to add two stalks of celery. My celery was like Jack and the Beanstalk was huge. So I didn't go. I reckon I've used one. So and I do. I'm yes. just interrupting for a minute, Felicity. In fact, unfortunately, and I think I might have been the one that led you astray, Faro is not gluten-free. Oh. So that would be my fault. I think I put that in your notes. How did I check? So, yeah, so I obviously read something wrong as well. So yeah. someone else so, is sprouting that. So if, we want to, if you want to make the same salad gluten-free, you can substitute quinoa or brown rice and that would have, they would give you the same results, that same beautiful flavours. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately not gluten-free. Sadly not, Gina, okay, stick with um, the other alternatives. So we've got two stalks of celery, four sprigs of fresh chives, parsley. Now I have all of that here, popping that in. And next will be my two apples, they're just cored and then cut into quarters so you don't have to slice them or anything. And measuring cup on, we are go with my dry measuring cup as I can. And it's just going to be two seconds, speed five. Sounds good, smells good. And I think my timing is going to be perfect because it sounds like that barbecue is sounding pretty good. All right, this is what we've got here. And saying to pop it into a bowl, I'm just going to chop it one more time because I've still got some big chunks of my super celery. So I'm just going to use the back arrow. Two seconds, speed five. I only did one second, that's all it needed. Got to pop it in with the rest of the ingredients. Okay. 
Actually going back to my original bowl. And next is 30 grams of olive oil. 10 grams of sherry vinegar. I hadn't used it before, but it wasn't expensive and I was able to grab it at Harris Farm. I couldn't see it at Scoop, but I'm sure they had it there as well. 10 grams of lemon juice, which is lemon juice. Beautiful big lemon too. 15 grams of Dijon mustard. Teaspoon of caster sugar. So I only had raw sugar, so I um, just blitzed it to turn into caster sugar before. I actually just need salt and pepper. Okay, it's asking for 20 grams of the reserved cranberry mixture. So that's our cranberries now, they've just sat nicely. I'm just using the scales to get that 20 grams, fairly accurate. Measuring cup in. Okay, it's gonna be five seconds speed four. Okay, add dressing and reserved cranberry mixture into farro mixture and stir to combine. Okay, so. How's it smelling, Felicity? Because it's it looking smells really delicious. Mm -hmm. So do the um, the rissoles that the <laughs> made for me as well. They smell good as well. So it's going to make a really nice, tasty dinner. And that, that's one of the wonderful things about the Thermomix. You can actually have the meat on the barbecue but be making your salad at the same time so it all comes together at the end. That's right. It'll all come together. And I'm hoping that there will be... Um, salad left for my lunch tomorrow too. I reckon those flavours would intensify overnight and make a beautiful lunch tomorrow. Maybe you should actually just hide some before you put it out. <laughs> yes, just give them some lettuce leaves. <laughs> so I've just mixed this up and it really smells delicious and I'm definitely going to be using farro again. Um, I fortunately don't have an issue with, with gluten. All right, so now I'm just tipping this in to my salad, my mixed salad. It's only asked for 60 grams of salad, but to be perfectly honest, I would add in more than that next time. There's six of us. A few more leaves. Yep, a few more leaves in there. Never goes astray, a bit more green. All right, so I'm just going to mix this up and add the feta. Definitely needs more greens because my greens have disappeared under there. So just, I've used feta rather than goat's cheese because I had feta and we're all about eating what we've got. Okay, so there is oh, yes. delicious apple and cranberry arrow salad. Arrow salad. <laughs> Bit of a mouthful. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> enjoy everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Felicity. And you enjoy your burgers with your food. <laughs> Very good. Um, now we have, uh, I'm thinking Ellen might be ready to show us the finished cheese. So let's. Spotlight, Ellen, and here we go. Hi, thank you for coming back, Felicity. That was lovely. You'll have to let me know how the farrow turns out. 
<laughs> I've not tried that before either. Is it Pharaoh with an F, a PH or an F? Uh, an F. Um, and it's it's an ancient grain, so it's one of those you know one of those old grains. So it has From Egypt, of, I assume. Yeah, yeah. actually, <laughs> yes, it is. Um, that lots of really good nutritional value, just not good for celiacs. Clearly, no. Yeah. Okay, but good we clarified that. <laughs> not oh, that's, yeah. Thank you, Chris. It's got a nutty flavour. Thank you. Um, as you can see, we have the camembert ready. I've just plated that up with our dip, some pre-made crackers because I didn't have a chance to do the seeded, the sheet seeded crackers, but I highly recommend those. They are amazing. Um, and then just some celery. And you can see how great that looks, how soft this cheese is. I'm just going to cut it. And you can actually adjust the cooking time to suit your preference and also the size of your actual um, camembert. This is clearly a small camembert because there's just the two adults. And in this house and two children and um, I'm the only one that's awake. Even the cat's asleep on the couch. So <laughs> looks like I'll be the only one enjoying this tonight. But you can see that gooiness. I'm just going to pop it on this cracker. And that just looks oh, and smells. Oh, look that. Yeah, just, you know, gooey yeah. cheese heaven. <laughs> <laughs> With a little bit of sweet and crunchy, you know, on mm -hmm. top. Yeah, um, and really the, nice. The thing the thing with the camembert is depending on when you like what temperature it is when you start cooking it and whether it's an aged mm. camembert or a young camembert, your cooking temperature changes. I'm speaking for her because she's busy eating and making us mm. all jealous. Um, Do but, yourself a favour and make this 100% so great with a glass of wine. I'm not a huge cheese person, but that is delicious. Um, and also the other thing I wanted to mention is when you're cooking it in your aroma, Yes, I lined it with the foil and then the baking paper on top. But if your cheese came packaged that way with foil and, and that, you know, waxy um, baking paper, you can just use that. So just put a couple of holes in it and you can steam it on that. So, oh, yeah. So good. Thank you. Enjoy that. And, uh, yes, I think a, a little sneaky uh, evening supper while everyone else is asleep is exactly what you deserve tonight. Why not? Well, that dip, I must say, I only used a half portion with this. And that is heaps. That's not even all of it. Half of it's in the fridge already. Um, but they also said store this in a sealable container and it should last a couple of days. Ah, so, perfect. Even better. Perfect. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you for joining Thank us you. tonight. Thank you and that concludes. Now, do we? Oh, it doesn't conclude. We've got to see the finished chicken. What am I talking about? Let's go back to our chook. I can't believe I nearly the walked chook. away without that now. The chook. I know. Us. Well, there we oh. go. There is our finished chook. If I just turn it around, you can see beautifully cooked inside. The skin is amazing. It's still super tender. You can see how soft it is um, when you give it a bit of a squish. Um, and it's going to pair beautifully with the asparagus and pea salad that we um, made the vinaigrette in the Thermomix. And then we steamed the asparagus and the sugar snaps, added it to greens, and away we go. So, lunch tomorrow is actually sorted I so if you, you haven't tried it before try it it is spectacular if, if i lived closer i'd be knocking on your door masked of course um, well one of the things i would also say is if you're short on time you could actually steam the chicken in the varoma um, yeah. and then pop it into the oven or the barbecue just to kind of seal up and crisp out crisp up on the outside so that's an alternative um, yeah. if you don't have a barbie handy Yes, that is actually yep. really good advice. I do like steamed chicken because it does stay so incredibly, you know, succulent and, and mm. beautiful. Um, but that yeah, looks absolutely. fantastic. And I, I, Mel, are you like me? Before your meter, how good were you at cooking chicken? Were you pretty good already? Oh, look, I, I love cooking. Um, so cooking chicken has never really phased me. Um, or any meat for that matter. But what I would say um, the meter has done is it gives you the freedom to walk away. You can yeah. go downstairs, you can put a load of washing on, you can have a glass of wine, you have a coffee, whatever it happens to be. Um, it keeps you in touch with it. And particularly with the extended um, access by using um, your Wi-Fi or your Alexa or whatever you happen to have, um, it means that you've got a bigger distance. So you don't feel like you're attached to the oven or attached yeah. to the barbecue. So I think from that perspective, um, it's superb. But certainly if I'm trying something new, having that confidence that 
I know what the internal temperature is going to be. I'm not going to, you know, poison people, which is always yeah. kind of handy. Yeah. Um, although, so, you know, staying at home, who's going to know? Um, <laughs> you know, I think I've got a, a whole eye fillet in the fridge that is going to go on the barbecue on the weekend. So I'm keen to see how that kind of yeah. comes out as well. Yeah. Um, Cause I would, I prefer it medium rare. Um, but yeah, look, I think it just provides confidence for someone who's not confident. Yeah. Um, it gives you freedom to move away, you know, if you are confident. Um, but then certainly if you're cooking for a lot of people, you can stick one in one of the, you know, if you need to have medium rare for one, for example, and fully, you know, um, what's the other word? Overdone. Not well in my done. Words. Well yeah, done. Overdone. <laughs> um, then you can keep an eye on the ones that you want to um, bring you know, keep medium out. rare. And yeah. you can pair more than one meter. So you can actually buy additional probes as well. So yeah. um, that just gives you the freedom to kind of amp up and down as you need. But look, I love the meter. It's really simple. Yeah. It's kind of well, cool. I, so, yeah. look, I, I'm, I'm a relatively confident cook and I've always been quite comfortable cooking chicken. But when mm. I lost my confidence was when I'd left a chicken roasting in a barbecue and I didn't know oh, the barbecue no. had run out of gas. <laughs> so halfway through the cook, it had stopped. Yeah. I went back and went, uh, why is this chicken raw? If I'd had the meter, I would have known very early on that there was a problem. So for me, yeah. it was it's that added confidence of, mm. A, my gas bottle hasn't run out unknowingly, and B, it is actually cooked properly before I try not to poison my children. So yes, Agreed. Agreed. Good, good yeah. point. All right. Well, thank well, you and enjoy. Please. Uh, we please certainly will. And thank you for having me tonight. It's been fun. Oh, thanks for, for being here. So that concludes our class. Um, but I want to thank you all for joining us. And as always, I will be sending out an email um, afterwards with all the links to all the recipes. And we really just wanted to highlight that quite often I hear people say, oh, but, you know, why do you don't need a Thermomix if you, know, you cook on the barbecue? Of course, Thermomix is never going to replace your barbecue. But, oh, my goodness, it's an awesome addition to your barbecue, being able to make marinades and rubs and salads um, and quick appetisers. You know, how simple with the dip and the cheese that, um, that Ellen made. If you had people coming around unexpectedly, you know, in the future when we can do that, um, you can whip something up, know that you're giving something beautiful and fresh and lots of flavour, but you're not stuck in the kitchen while your guests are sitting outside. So, and I'm reading the chat and Narelle's right, you can mingle while you're using the meter. So, yes. So thank you all. We love having all of you join us um, at our classes. Um, if you're not aware, the next class we've got, so tomorrow night we've got a fake away cook along if you wanted to make pad thai um, together with Sarah, she's running that. Um, and on Saturday afternoon, we've got a really special class. It's called the Mid Autumn Festival and it's being run by a group of our Asian consultants and they're gonna be making different kinds of mooncake and different activities around um, celebrating that, that, that mid-autumn festival. So lanterns, all sorts of things. So good for the kids as well. Um, we've got, uh, next week, we've got, uh, I'm going to get the name wrong, but it's all things spring and fresh. And I've, I've seen the menu and I honestly have said, could they please courier me all the food? Um, and we've got a whole bunch of other ones coming up. So I'll add all the links in the, uh, in the email I send out and we will look forward to seeing you all then. Um, but of course, as always, if you would like to know more, reach out. And if you're inspired and think, hey, I want to be part of this, the fun that goes on and I want to be cooking as well, um, please reach out, reach out to your consultant or reach out to me and we'll put you in touch with the right person so you can find out about joining. And I've been reminded in the chat and I can't believe I forgot it. We've got a kids cook along on something. Monday. Perfect to get your kids occupied for a little bit. They're going to be making uh, soft and chewy white chocolate chip cookies with Hayley and her daughter Addison. Um, and so it's not going to go for a full hour, but it's a great way to get them busy in the kitchen making an afternoon tea treat for the whole family. So, oh, and I've been reminded again, honestly, we've got so much happening. We're doing, so every Friday night, we're doing a fake away cook along. And Stephen, who did the fish tonight, is hosting the cook along next Friday, and he'll be making garlic prawns. So again, if you want to treat yourself to a bit of a, a bit of a special treat, um, jump on register. And when you register, I'll, I haven't actually set up the link yet I don't think but when I do you'll get the list of ingredients to have ready so you can join in and cook prawns with Stephen okay I'm sure I've forgotten something else but 
my beautiful people are reminding me in the chat. So um, I will make sure it goes out in the email. But again, thank you all for joining us and um, we will look forward to seeing you again. And uh, I always love passing on your feedback to the consultants because we're all in this together. You know, as I keep saying, lockdown sucks. Um, but if we can entertain each other and support each other and keep our little community going, it's good for all of us. So um, with that in mind, we will keep delivering these as long as you keep wanting to attend them. And on that note, I'm going to say good night. Have a great day, week, weekend, and we'll see you all very soon. Bye.